Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to 999. We're back here in the shower room where we left off, and uh, we saw a horrible, horrible, gruesome sight of Snake's body in, uh, well, well right over there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, covered with blood. Terrible, terrible sight, but I'm sure we have to investigate it further. So, let us begin, and uh, we've done a little bit of investigating. We did get a screwdriver last time, as you can see down there in the inventory screen, but we still haven't checked any of this room practically. Got a roll of toilet paper. Is that blood? Wait. This is some kind of code. I bet. It's toilet paper with some kind of red symbols on it. You think maybe that's a... Skytail or Sightail Cipher? Sightail Cipher? What the heck is that? You wrap a piece of paper around a stick, then write several sentences on it, so that the whole paper is filled up. Then you unwrap the paper, and you can't tell what the original message was, right? That's how it works, more or less. I don't get it. Then to decipher it, you gotta have a stick that's the same diameter as the original one. Same diameter as the original one, huh? Yeah. Then you just wrap the paper around that stick and you can read the code. I'm not sure I completely follow, but I bet when they show me it'll make a lot more sense. A wooden box. There's something in here. Luminol? What is... Is that like a cleaner? What the heck is this thing? Some kind of spray bottle? There's something written on it. Lumen can't read anything else. The label's all faded. Let me see that. He just grabbed it from him. That wasn't very nice. Genpei, I think you are the last person to talk about what is nice. Oh, this is Luminol. You know, forensics guys use it at a crime scene. Oh, is it like for detecting blood and urine, kind of? Oh, yeah, that stuff glows blue when you spray it on blood. Even if the blood's been wiped off, it'll still glow. I'm sure that could be useful for something. Though I'm sure that would make it just even scarier than it was. So, uh, something I kind of wanted to bring up. We got a bucket. Cool. Um, something I wanted to bring up. I actually found out that I think this is the 15th when I'm recording this right now. Well, the evening. It's almost the 16th. Apparently on the 17th, um, uh oh, on the 17th, uh, the 999, the novel, comes out for, uh, iPhones and iPads and stuff, which I'm really excited about. I don't know if I'll get it or not, I'm, I'm still debating it, but they change the game in a few ways and they redo the art so it looks amazing. Not that this art isn't bad, it just, it looks so much sharper. Jempei reached for the broom, and as he grabbed it, he heard a soft voice behind him. It was June. The rabbit hutch. Huh? He turned around. June still looked sadly pale, but there was a smile on her face. Oh, you just reminded me of it. The rabbit hutch, I mean. How did I remind you of something like that? Jumpy in the broom. You were always playing around with the broom in front of the rabbit hutch. I was? Don't you remember? Junpei stared at the broom. Actually, I've been told it's Junpei. That'll be interesting to remember. It's just like June, but with Pei. Junpei stared at the broom in his hand. You mean, you don't remember that summer either? She looked very sad. He shook his head. Of course I remember. How could I forget something like that? It was terrible. Story time with Junpei. They were in the sixth grade. Junpei and Jun had been assigned to take care of the classroom pets, the rabbits. Their chief duty was to clean the hutches every morning. On the final day of school before summer vacation began, Junpei overslept. He rushed to school and found Jun standing in front of the rabbit hutches. Aw, she looked so sad. No sooner had Junpei arrived than Jun began to cry. He had no idea why, until he looked behind her, into the rabbit hutch. Did they die? The first thing he saw was blood. What? 
The hutch was filled with the dead bodies of the rabbits. Ugh. What happened to the rabbits? Even after their teachers and friends came to see what the commotion was, June couldn't stop crying. I just kept crying and crying until you came over. You held my hand, and you looked very serious, and you said, Don't cry. I'm going to catch the person who did this. After you told me that, I finally stopped crying. Well, the real fun started after you quit crying. You told me we were going to catch the killer together, and then we're going to lock him in a boat. Hee <laughs> hee. June smiled, and a little of the flush of life returned to her cheeks. Then we decided we'd ambush them. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Man, what kind of sadistic person goes and kills rabbits? Well, I mean, kills rabbits that belong to like a... I'm assuming this is like a school. The school also kept roosters and guinea pigs. Junpei and June had decided the murderer would likely return to finish off the rest of the animals. Is there even a motive for this man? They would ambush the killer at night. Junpei and June hid behind the hutch at dusk, at d at dusk and waited. It was a warm summer night. The quiet sound of crickets whispered through the air. As the sun went down, the stars began to wink at them from the sky. And June's. Akane Kurashiki's face. It's so weird to actually see her name, I'm not used to it. That night was something Junpei knew he would never forget, as long as he lived. But the murderer never showed up. We waited for them all summer vacation, and they never showed up. Yeah, but the animals didn't get attacked either. I think all that work amounted to something, you know? He felt the same way, but it was good to hear her say it. Although, you know, if you think about it, we were probably taking on a lot more than we could handle. What do you mean? She looked up at him, confused. Well, come on. We were just kids. If whoever killed the rabbits had actually showed up, they probably would have had a knife or something. I mean, you must have been pretty worried, right? The rabbit killer's coming around, he's got his knife, I mean, he's ready to stab anything that gets in his way of the rabbits. I... I wasn't worried. Because you were... Because you were there with me. She blushed furiously. You know, no one else wanted to take care of the animals. Clearly embarrassed, she tried desperately to change the subject. I was the only one who asked to do it, at first. Yeah, boys don't really want to bother with taking care of animals, you know? Well, yeah, but you asked to do it after I did, didn't you? Uh, if it wasn't the rabbits, they were going to make me do something else. You know how that school was. I figured it'd be better if I was working with somebody who wasn't too much of a loudmouth, right? Somebody who wasn't going to tell on me if I felt like blowing it off. Really? That's why you volunteered? Yeah, yeah, it is. He nodded quickly, and much too earnestly, and then quickly looked away at something very important. That hadn't been the reason, of course. He asked to take care of the rabbits so he could be near June. But it had been so long ago, he couldn't bring himself to tell her how he felt back then. It would be embarrassing. He took a quick breath to clear his head, tossed the broom up, and then snatched it out of the air. Well, we don't really have time to be walking down memory lane like this, you know? We've got to figure out a way out of this room, otherwise... Yes. Ju nodded curtly, and then turned and walked away. Ugh. Junpei turned around and looked at the room. At Snake's body. Chunks of flesh and organs still lay on the floor. The conversation he and June had been having scarcely fit their surroundings. But perhaps that was simple human nature. Despite such a situation, or perhaps because of it, the mind turned to the farthest thing from death that it could find. Still, Junpei couldn't help but feel a twinge of guilt at wanting so desperately to live when Snake lay dead before him. He had to live. He wanted a life again, a life, with June in it. As he stared at the clumps of black and flesh, all Junpei could think of was how much he wanted to live. Ugh. Okay, so we got a broom. Oh, no, I didn't mean to combine that, sorry. I'm curious if... Maybe if we combine the broom with something, if that would be able to allow us to get the keycard out, considering that it is a rather long handle. I don't know. 
Now, we already looked in here, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe this was it. It's a lever. Nothing happens when I pull it, though. Nothing. It doesn't flush. Probably because the tank's empty, genius. The pipe that's supposed to fill it must be clogged. Well, couldn't you just get some water and pour it straight in there? With the bucket, maybe, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this was the one with the tar. No, no, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. There's nothing in the toilet. If there was, that would be gross. And there might be something in the tank, you know? Let's open that up. Ooh, what's that? A red key card. Okay. Man, we got a lot of stuff. Tank where the red card was. Okay. I'm gonna have trouble putting all this on, uh... All this on my little inventory list, I'm sure. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite interested for the 999, uh, novel. As soon as I finish this game, I wouldn't mind playing it. I know it's the same game, but I'd love to see the new art. And, uh, there's lots of cool features. They took out the escape missions, like uh, these ones, from what I know. Oh, yeah, he checked them. Um, they took out these so much, and they focus more on the story, because it's called 999, the novel. The dividing wall. What is that? Okay. Um, so let's see if we can unscrew that. The thermometer was screwed onto the wall. That meant that Jun Junpei needed to take the screws out with the screwdriver. While he was so engaged, Santa suddenly spoke. Hey, Junpei. You know why thermometers only go up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius like this one? Junpei answered without taking his eyes off the screw. No, can't say I ever thought about that. At 107 degrees, the cells in the human body start to die, and the organs begin to shut down. The proteins in your cells start to harden. It's like when you hard boil an egg. Even if you cool it down afterwards, it won't go back to being a raw egg. In other words, it's dead. That's why thermometers don't go past 107. There's no point. Why had Santa brought that up, Genpei wondered. Hmm, suspicious? Oh yeah? He continued to work at the screw. But it's pretty rare for a fever to get that high. Even viruses and stuff don't usually drive the body temperature up to 107. Of course, there are other external things that could. Like an oven, or like a flamethrower. <laughs> like what? Well, let's see. Something like getting locked in a sauna. Or getting thrown into an incinerator and burnt to death. Man, what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I guess that could get a little hotter than 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Junpei gave a short, barking laugh. Ha! <laughs> a moment later, the screw fell off. With a small tug, Junpei pulled the thermometer from the wall. Alright, I got it! He looked up and saw Santa, glaring at the blank section of the wall. Huh? What's up? Nothing. Forget about it. A little odd. Santa spun around and walked off, away from Junpei. But as Junpei watched him go, he didn't look angry. He looked very, very sad. Suspicious. Okay, anything special about this thermometer in particular? Maybe we need the thermometer, because she was talking about maybe pouring boiling water on it. Maybe we need the thermometer to tell when it's boiling. I don't know. It doesn't go up that high, so that I don't know if that would be actually that useful. Oh, you took the thermometer off. It says open at the bottom of the gauge. I wonder what it means. Maybe when it gets that hot, something will open. Hmm, I didn't think about that. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like the power's on. I'm wondering what the deal is with those things that say lock up there, though. Maybe it's locked. Okay. I'm not thinking we're going to be able to go that way. Let's take a look at these... Sh what is that? There's a piece of paper tied to this pipe with a wire. Notice, drainage valve operation. Please do not flush the water in these pipes. Doing so may cause the drain to overflow. 
Do we need to flush the water in these pipes? Hmm. And of course we can't reach that, huh? It looks like there's something down there on that grate. We already looked. I think it's a card. Yeah, it's the blue card. Can't reach it, though. It's too deep. What are our items? Let me take a look. I'm sure the broom could be somewhat useful for that, but I don't know how to actually, like, grab it, or... If we had maybe duct tape, we could stick it to the end of the broom. Yeah. If I can get this hot water on the thermometer, then maybe... Alright, thermometer, let's get this party started. Oh, I didn't even know I was using the thermometer. Okay. I guess it's in my inventory, so it worked. It, it automatically... Yep, looks like that's doing the trick. There goes the gauge. And now it's at the open mark. Hmm? Huh, it opened. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's such a... It was so unexpected. Who could have expected that it would open? What's this? Looks like there's a piece of paper in here. 957 plus. Interesting. That means you're supposed to add something to 957, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. The problem is, what to add? It's a good question. Okay. Now, there are two things over here. Um, well, more than two, probably, but... One of them is this LLR. Now, to me, that looks like it's been written in blood. It might not be, but it looks like it. So maybe Snake was trying to write something before he died. Maybe. I'm not sure. Let's check it out. Those letters written in blood. LLR. Do you think that might be some sort of dying message from Snake? That's what I'm thinking. No, that's impossible. You saw the body. They aren't doing anything after something like that happens. To you. Well, what if he, like, cut his hand or something? Then this... The way the blood's dried tells you it's real old. Oh, okay. Whoever's blood this is, it ain't snakes. Then you're saying this blood was put here a long time ago? Yeah. Hmm. So, I wonder if it means anything. LLR. Oh, didn't mean to click it again. Sorry. Now, let's check out the body. That's where we came in. Oh, so that's why that's why we heard the sploosh when we came in, because we probably stepped in his guts. It's not locked, but there ain't really any point. All that's out there is the number door. We can't go back through the number door, even if we wanted to. Chunks of pinkish meat <laughs> are splattered across the floor. Snake, why did this happen to you? Dang, I just can't... Now, my thoughts behind Snake are... I think he either got... He either figured a way out and then he got in trouble somehow and blew up or maybe someone set him up i'm not sure yet and you know any of those could be true um uh, you know maybe he would maybe he was he somehow figured a way out of the area and and uh zero found out and just blew him up on the spot maybe you know maybe someone set him up i don't know because we are we, you know, when everyone was apart for a, quite a lengthy period of time, someone else with maybe some more knowledge or something could have done something to him. I'm not sure. Now, let's see. What what are our problems? Let's look at our items. What are our problems currently? We have a bucket. I don't know what the red key card could be used for. Maybe on that one door. We have luminol. I wonder if... If I could spray this somewhere, maybe... And use that to find any clues. Let's try combining the broom with the toilet paper, because the broom is kind of a stick. Let's see if that does anything. Oh, nope. Hmm? What if I wrap the toilet paper around the broom? Okay, what does it say? 634. Oh, I get what it I get what the thing is now. Okay. Oh, so you wrap the toilet paper around the broom, huh? Looks like the symbols line up perfectly. It says 634 plus. Let's try combining that with the broom. No, okay. I wonder if I physically add those two numbers together, that would be what we needed to get out of here. 
See, another problem that we can't get to is... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Another problem is we can't currently get to the card at the bottom of the drain. So I'm not sure quite what to do about that yet. I think we have to do something else before it's going to let us enter a password. What happens if I swipe the key on it? The red light's on, Jumpy. Okay, so we've gotten one. We need to get the other key, obviously, before we can even put in a passcode. Hmm. What else could we do? I know there was something down here, but I don't quite know what all these mean. Really hot water comes out of the shower. I get the feeling it might still be useful for something else. What if we try to bucket it up? Maybe I can use the shower here to fill the bucket with hot water. Hey, Seven, could you turn on the shower? I'm going to put the bucket under the head. Ah, okay, sure thing. And maybe if we get some hot water, we could pour it on that tar, like we were talking about uh, last episode. Bucket filled with hot water. Hey, look at that. Bucket upside down. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So let's try using it on that. There's something that looks like tar inside the toilet bowl. If I flush the hot water from the bucket, that should clean it up. Oh, so let's put it into the tank. Alright, so I just pour the hot water into this tank and... Looks like you filled it. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Now you should be able to flush it, right? There's probably a handle somewhere on the tank you can pull. You think so? Serious? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Some pipes, uh... Where's the... Oh, okay, let's flush the hot water. I was looking for the thing. Well, there it goes. Just like a toilet should work. Equals 185. Ugh. The dirt we flushed out has settled to the bottom of the bowl. That stuff's washed off. Looks like that writing was numbered. See it? 185 equals. What is this? You got me. Just looks like numbers. Do I need to add those numbers together? Uh, give me just a second. I just want to add all those numbers together and just see if I can draw any conclusions. But I, uh, I'll need a second so I don't just stand around here. So be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I'm not sure how useful these are. Maybe they give us the passcode. Um, I added the um, 634 plus the 187. And I got a 819. Then I decided to add 957 to 185. And I got 1142. And just out of curiosity, I added all three numbers together and I got 1776. I'm not sure if any of them will be useful, but if they are, I'll add them in a note. Uh, but just did a little math there. Not really a whole lot going on. Um, no, not there. Um, what about these lights? I doubt it. No, it won't even let me click it. Now, let's fill the bucket back up with water. Do we still have the bucket? No, we don't have the bucket. Excellent. Um, there ought to be a warning label or something. Hmm. Well, my next clue would be maybe to take the luminol and spray it on some stuff. Could I spray it on this, maybe? A little slot here for swiping. I meant this. Oh, wait. The password is four digits. So maybe it's one of those four-digit numbers I came up with. No, no, not that. Lock, huh? There's a blue light right next to it, but it's off. And the red light... Nothing happens when I press the buttons. I guess I'll have to get the red and blue lights to turn on first. I was hoping maybe if I sprayed that on there, I could see which buttons were pushed. Let's try spraying it on this wall. Wait! You don't really think we're supposed to use the luminol here, do you? Yeah, it does seem kind of weird to use it here. But maybe I should just try it just in case. No, Junpei, don't. You only have one use of it, because that's how you use everything. Oh, do we have to turn off the light to see it? Okay, I've sprayed the luminol on the wall. What's next? Do I have to 
turn off the light, maybe? L, L, R, L, R, L. What does that mean? Uh, let's just look at it. Just like you thought, Junpei. There's some more letters showing up after the L, R, L, L, R. See? It says L, L, R, L, R, L. What could that mean? Sorry, lights off is scary, although it might be useful for searching the room. Oh no, you can't. Okay, never mind. Okay, um... So what do we have left in our inventory? We have a card that we've already scanned in. We have that broom and that number code. Now obviously I need to get down here. Jen pays in this card? Yeah, I know, I know. Hold on. Um, the red card floated. Oh. Well, this blue one probably floats too, right? Float. Yeah, it might. Let me take a look at that note just one more time. The pipe on the right here must be connected to the drain in the middle of the room. Okay, I can see that. If you turn on the water here, it'll probably come up through the drain. Okay, so... According to how pipes normally work in, in most situations, if, uh, if the handle is facing in the direction of the pipe, water can go through, but if it's facing away from it, um, it usually blocks it. That's not necessarily always true, but it's a general good rule of thumb. So let's try turning on the water and see if that will allow it to go through. Boiling hot water comes out of the shower. No, okay. Doing so may cause the drain to overflow, which is what we want. No. Where do I... Is there, like, another? Is there, like, a sink somewhere or something I'm supposed to do? Um, maybe... Oh, maybe I need to just look at it instead of, like, messing with anything. Let's try that and see if that works. Ah, it's not floating. The card's sitting on some sort of fine metal grate in the drain. Hmm. Do I, like, have to... No, I can't flush any of the toilets because none of them are connected. Okay, well, we are running out of time, so... Let me look this up really quick and I'll be right back. Sorry. Okay, back again. So, I... I feel a little dumb for not noticing this, but... In my defense, um... It doesn't exactly follow the normal conventions of how how piping systems normally work. So if you remember, we had that code on the wall, which I've unfortunately not taken the time to, uh, to write down as of yet. Which I will write down right now. Look, it's like, it's, it's live note-taking. So L-L-R-L-R-L. -L -L -L. Okay, so that is actually the code that we need to follow with the drains. So, whoops, L, L, R, L, R, L. Well, I did what it said on the wall. I wonder if it actually did anything. Let's take a look. Hey, this drain's acting up. What the heck did you do? <laughs> it's not my fault. I just messed with the valves a little. Nothing big. Nothing big. Oh, hey! The water's overflowing. Jumpy, the cart is floating! Looks like the water floated the cart up out of the drain. Well, let's... Oh, no, I'm, I meant to, to click the drain. There must be water flowing through the pipe on the right. There's water pouring out of the drain. And... Card! A blue key card. Excellent. Uh, what is this card for, I wonder? Well, I bet it's for the door. Okay, great job, Jumpy. Both of the lights are on now. Now, you just need to put in the password. Okay. Now, I do have a few passwords that I can use. There's only... Only two of them are uh, more than a... Or, are four digits. So I'm going to try the 1142 first. I'm thinking that's not right, but let's just give it a shot. So... Oh... 
both lights are on. Yep, yep. Let me enter the password. What's with the E and C keys? It's probably the same thing the E and C keys did before. E means enter, C means clear. So after you put in the password, hit E. If you screwed up, hit C. Thanks for the help. Oh, dang it. Okay. One, one, four, two. Nope, okay. Let's try one, seven, seven, six. Ta-da! Go, math! Open! Math is so great, isn't it? Okay, so can the door open now? Aha, we found our way out. That one wasn't too bad. I thought it'd be a little worse. You found it! Congratulations. Hope you, hope you are happy with your win.